What's going on guys, it's ETA Prime back here again. Today we're going to be taking a look at a 5.5 inch AMOLED display for the Raspberry Pi. This works for the Raspberry Pi 2, 3, 3B+, and the Raspberry Pi 4. So for the past couple weeks, I've been on the hunt for a 5 to 5.5 inch screen for the Raspberry Pi 4s so I can build a handheld around the Pi 4. Recently, I did a review on this 5 inch DSi screen, which runs for about $42. It's a great screen, but I was hoping for something with a little better viewing angles. And my search led me to this display right here. This is the WaveShare 5.5 AMOLED display for the Raspberry Pi. So this display connects over HDMI instead of DSi, but they have included the newer adapters for the Raspberry Pi 4. Since the Pi 4 has micro HDMI, we needed these new adapters and a lot of these companies are starting to bring these to the table. The price on this AMOLED display is up there when you compare it to other screens for the Raspberry Pi. This goes for around $130, but I was able to pick one up on eBay with a coupon for $85. So the price is definitely high on these displays, but it's not an LCD TFT or an IPS. This is an AMOLED display, and I really haven't seen any reviews on this display, so I was really interested to pick it up and see if it's worth the price. So inside of the packaging, you're obviously going to get the display itself. This is 5.5 inches AMOLED at 1080 by 1920. It also supports touch, 10 points of touch with a USB interface. We're also going to get a little one foot HDMI adapter, micro USB power cord, our standoffs and bolts to hold the Pi to the back of the unit, and our HDMI and USB adapters. Now this one here is for the Raspberry Pi 3 or the 3B Plus. And we'll use this to connect to the USB on the Raspberry Pi 3 and micro USB on the screen to allow touch capabilities. But I really didn't pick this up for the Raspberry Pi 3. I picked it up for the Raspberry Pi 4. And luckily, they do include the new adapters. So we have full-size HDMI to micro HDMI. And we also have this offset full-size USB to micro USB for the touch on the screen. If you remember correctly, they have swapped around where the USB ports are on the Raspberry Pi 4 versus the Raspberry Pi 2 or 3. So this needed to be changed as well. Overall, this is an HDMI touch screen. This can be used with your PC or pretty much any other device that has HDMI out. But you got to keep in mind, the resolution out of the box here is 1080 by 1920 so it's set up in a vertical orientation if you have let's say a dvd player that you want to connect this to it might not work unless that device has the ability to rotate the screen and software so you got to keep that in mind when buying a screen like this assembly seems straightforward i'm going to be connecting this to a raspberry pi 4 so i'm going to use the raspberry pi 4 adapters we also have some standoff screws and i've flashed raspy into an sd card just so we could get up and running pretty quickly all you're going to need to put this together is a small screwdriver. First things first, I want to line the Raspberry Pi 4 up. There's a few different standoff locations and I want to make sure that I have the correct ones. It's going to be these four middle ones. So we'll just screw the standoffs in. And once I have those in place, I can put the Raspberry Pi 4 on top. And there's four screws that will go right into those studs we just added. So now I have the Raspberry Pi mounted. I just need to put in the HDMI adapter. We'll go right to that micro HDMI. And the power and touch for the screen itself. It'll go right into one of the USB 3.0 ports on the Pi 4. And the micro USB port marked touch on the screen. When it's set up this way, all we need to do is add power through the USB Type-C connector on the Raspberry Pi 4. In turn, the USB 3.0 port on the Pi 4 will power the screen and activate touch. So no drivers are required for this screen, but you will need to set up the config.txt on the SD card. I've already done that with the card that I have here, Flash with Raspbian. I want to see if this works, so I'll just place my micro SD card in here, and I'll boot it up for the first time. The screen does have a glass panel on the front, and they're claiming 6H hardness. Personally, I'm not sure what that means, but it's not Gorilla Glass. Just give this a second to boot up. And I thought it would turn out like this. That's totally fine. I can actually switch it over in just a second. But I gotta say, this looks like a premium handset. Overall, the colors are amazing on this little screen. Resolution is great. Viewing angles are amazing here. I'm not sure if it's showing up on camera. But yeah, this thing is super sharp. And touch response seems like it's dead on. I haven't done any calibration. But it's working. 
Now, operating systems like Raspbian, in my opinion, aren't great on these small touch panels. If this was much bigger, I could definitely use it as a touchscreen computer, but I really didn't buy this screen to use it as a touchscreen. I just needed a portable screen for the Pi 4. I'm going to dive back into the config file and set this up in landscape mode, and then we'll see how it performs. All right, so I've spent about an hour and a half messing around with this screen. Unfortunately, I cannot recommend it if you're going to use it with a Raspberry Pi, and that's really what it's marketed towards. I love the colors, I love the resolution, touch response and accuracy is dead on, but there's one major issue with this screen when it's connected to a Raspberry Pi 3 or a Raspberry Pi 4, and I cannot correct the issue. I've messed around with the timings, I tried about 10 different configurations here, but this thing has some of the worst screen tearing that I've seen in a mini display. And I do want to mention this is only happening with a Raspberry Pi, but that's what this screen is really marketed towards. As you can see here, this is a little screen tearing test, and this is some of the worst I've ever seen. This had all the bases covered until I got to the screen tearing test. Everything was looking great for a little handheld build with this AMOLED display, but it's just not going to work out if we're getting screen tearing like this. And just to show you that problem's only happening with the Raspberry Pi, this is connected to my PC over HDMI. We have the same test here. It's smooth. It looks great. I have no screen tearing at all. But when it's connected to a Raspberry Pi 3, 3B+, or 4, I get nothing but screen tearing. Here's another quick test. I actually swapped over to a Raspberry Pi 3B+, just to make sure it wasn't the Pi 4 doing it. RetroPie is installed, and just even switching through the screens, you can see the tearing. I'm going to get into a game real quick. This was the main reason I purchased the screen, to create a little RetroPie handheld with the Raspberry Pi 4 and an AMOLED display. But it's just not going to work out. Now I've spent a lot of time in the config file trying to get the timings right on here. If you have any suggestions, let me know in the comments below. In my opinion, this would have been the ultimate screen for a little handheld. I love these AMOLED displays. And with the form factor, build quality, and the way the screen looks, I could have overlooked the $80 price tag here. But the one thing I can't overlook is the performance. So that's pretty much it for this video, guys. I'm really disappointed here. I thought I found the perfect screen for my build, but unfortunately, this one's just not going to work out. So if you've been looking at these AMOLED displays from Waveshare, specifically for a Raspberry Pi, I would definitely stay away from it. Yes, it does work through other devices with no screen tearing, but when it's connected to the Pi, you just get really bad performance. So like I mentioned, if you have any suggestions on that config.txt, let me know in the comments below. And by the way, I did try adding separate power to the Raspberry Pi and the screen itself just to make sure it wasn't a power issue, but I was still getting that screen tearing. So it looks like my search is still on for the perfect 5 to 5.5 inch screen for the Raspberry Pi. If you have any questions or suggestions, let me know in the comments below. But like always, thanks for watching.